737, 736 p.m. Um, just so everyone knows, we are being recorded by WinCam. Um, our meetings are broadcasted through them um, on their station and also as are available online. Um, so you are being recorded. Um, I do not have um, many new updates um, since town meeting um, for um, the planning board um, members were there for town meeting, but as Brian, I haven't spoken to you, Brian, but we did, um, Article 14 did pass. Um, so we did receive um, support from town meeting to proceed with a North Main study. Um, we can, at the end of the meeting, um, briefly just touch base about starting the RFP process for that and doing some drafts to then have the planning board review at a later meeting. Um, Brian, do you have any updates that you want to give the board at this time? Yeah, so um, I was able to get the MVP grant in for the climate communication strategy. We were actually able to get nine letters of support from the community, which was very encouraging. Um, so that was that was actually really cool that a lot of um, groups came together that are going to be involved in this project. So the School of Chinese Culture, um, Climate Action, uh, the managers, uh, the manager's office, obviously the planning board, um, and then the Farmers Market Alliance and several other groups. So it was it was it was pretty cool. Um, the other is the closure of Thompson Street. So we've been, there's been this reopening committee that I've been involved with, and we're kind of finding the the balance between um, the restaurants and the retail. Um, they obviously have different requests for what they feel they need, and um, it's trying to balance the parking situation with the with the outdoor dining. Um, I think it's working out well. We, we've only done one week, so we 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 haven't really been able to kind of really assess business. The one thing that we have heard from businesses is that generally the commercial businesses along Thompson Street would, you know, they want to have parking available until five o'clock, but now we've opened up 77 spots in the um, Waterfield and Aberjona lots that are now open for free two hour parking, I believe. So that will alleviate some of the parking problems that exist on Thompson when Thompson is closed as well um, as due to the outdoor dining. Um, Brian, can I jump in for a quick question please. on that or feedback? I don't know if it's appropriate to give feedback to you to then report to that working group. Definitely. But yeah. I received feedback today that some people are uncomfortable because there's sidewalk passing through the seating area and they're not more than six feet apart and people are walking through with no masks that are not, um, that are just a general public walking through. Um, it happened. It happens on Mount Vernon Street. Mm -hmm. um, was one of the examples um, outside of. Oh, I'm so blanking. Am Lucia's. I it's Lucia's. Lucia's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, that is making a handful of people. Yeah. So today we talked a lot about enforcement, and we were trying to divvy up, <laughs> divvy that up. You can imagine how you know talking with police and the health department. Basically, you know, if there's a, a license involved in terms of the liquor. Um, or food, uh, sorry, if, in terms of the liquor license or obviously anything that would make sense to call the police, the police is gonna enforce that. And in terms of social distancing, it's, it's, it, it's probably not, this is not decided yet, it's probably not going to be some type of immediate action where someone, you know, there's an issue because someone is not social distancing through the restaurant. Um, or like you said, someone's passing by the sidewalk without a mask on, there won't be um, kind of this, a policing of, of, of mask wearing and social distancing from, from, um, from the police. Um, it will basically be in the form of if there's something wrong with the setup of the restaurant, and that's, that's most likely the problem, um, then that would go through some, um, most likely the board of health, and then, then uh, uh, some type of like violation would be then, there, it has to be a verbal and then a written, and then you can find, and then we can fine um, these restaurants or whoever might be doing it. I believe it's up to $300 and uh, for each offense. But the idea is that we I'm did not- I'm not sure it's the actual restaurant that's doing it. It's the way that the plan was laid out to put the sidewalk going straight through the eating area. 
Um, so the only way you, cause you can't go into the road the way that it's set up, you have to go through the eating area. So people's masks are off, but you can't, you can't get around them or get six feet away. So it's just the, it's the logistics of the actual layout. And I think that was set by the town because it's the public way of what it was. It's just, that was the well, feedback and it also hurts the businesses because some people don't want to yeah, I mean, eat to there be because there's people walking through that are practicing safe social distances, but those people also need to move. It's anyway, it's just, it's feedback and yeah, no, it's it's good, and, and some of the problems that we've just basically now said, you know, look, we need we need an actual plan that's scaled so we can sit, not so much that the tables are six feet away, but uh, that the chairs are six feet away. So that that was that's something that we're trying to get from these restaurants, and the, but the select board has already kind of let that cat out of the bag in terms of having multiple. Um, they've approved multiple license, um, you know, extensions of licenses basically without the full um, review of, of those of those plants. So we are working on that. Lisa is very aware of all of this, but I'll, I'll certainly take those comments back to the site plan of, of what we need to do to make sure that social distancing occurs. And obviously Jen Murphy in the health department is reviewing these as well, but it's there's there's a couple there's a lot of moving parts um, with the enforcement part and police doesn't necessarily want to be out there enforcing you know, you're not six feet. Uh, like, you know, that's not, they don't really want to be there at the, at this moment of uh, doing that. Uh, and yep. we understand that. Okay, yeah, so, we, thank you, Brian. Go ahead. DM. I, I just wanted to say that we could, one simple way of doing it is to shut the street off and just route the pedestrian traffic around the seating. Right, so we would have we 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 have done that in some several cases where the diners are on the sidewalk and we're making uh, pedestrians go into the street into a safe place, um, you know, with barriers and whatnot. But the idea is that um, putting putting um, there's some ADA pro issues with that, in that if there isn't if there aren't ADA ramps kind of going on and off of that, you know, basically putting people into the street, there's there's some issues. So. I, okay. I'll just say that I'll just say that it's more complicated than than. Of, than of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Um, in terms of any other updates, I I think it makes sense to kind of move forward with our with our agenda. Um, but if anyone has any, oh, Maureen has a question. Maureen, go ahead. So as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing that's happened this past week is the meeting that was on the RFP that's about to go out on the development on the water field. Deb and I both attended, and I understand the select board discussed it last night, and I was quite surprised to learn that a meeting was called yesterday afternoon. We were not represented. In fact, hardly any citizens were able to attend, and this is moving forward. I spent a good um, number of hours on Friday sending a letter, um, and I did copy all of you. Um, I'm deeply, deeply uh, concerned about what's going, what's going forward. I believe that we've got a, um, a, 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 it looks almost certain like the planning board will end up um, being the permit granting authority. And yet we've had no role, no voice. We haven't given any feedback as a, as a board on this um, RFP. Um, I believe that, and I'll just say a couple of sentences, there are inherent conflicts in its objectives one um, criteria is supposed to be how it's in scale with the town center and the um, historic district and so on. There's another objective, which is to create this um, fairly large, potentially large number of affordable units. And then there's this other issue, which is the parking, which isn't uh, addressed. And to get the kind of parking to maintain the vitality of the local uh, retail, as well as to serve all those units, that's going to be structured parking. And I'm sorry, Heather Hannon isn't here. When we collectively were presented with an um, MAPC um, funded analysis of that project, they had this gigantic structured parking of um, two stories, not even screened on the ground and second floor. So you've got this huge structured parking thing that uh, then is going to go up. And now we're talking about going to 60 feet high. So. It's unclear in this RFP who's even going, who really are the players. Nobody, I gather at the select board meeting last night, nobody really knew who the selection committee was going to be. 
the committee that has been meeting, I believe, but Brian will have to tell us, has been disbanded. So who's in charge? In some at some level, the select board is. But if it's going to be a permit um, a project that comes to us, we're going to be there. And we know what we've just been through with two different projects with multiple meetings before we even got to um, uh, before we've even gotten filings. So the, in the meantime, the abutters really haven't had a voice. They, a couple, a few of them came to the meeting Diab and I attended, but they just said, well, when do we get to get involved? And they were told they now, and yet now I hear the whole committee's being disbanded. So I don't know what feedback they're getting. So anyway, when an, a meeting was announced yesterday morning in the middle of the morning to attend at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, I'd say the citizens didn't have a real good opportunity to show up and there were only a few, a couple who did. So this is was really- Was that a public uh, hearing? Was that a- uh, it, was, it was an agenda, it was an agenda item on, um, so I was asked, just like Maureen said, I was asked at like 4 p.m. They're like, hey, can you come to the select board meeting tonight uh, to talk about the Waterfield RFP? And I'm like, um, okay. But um, it was certainly news to me um, that- It wasn't posted? It was posted as an agenda item, yes. But, but it wasn't a public it? meeting. There was no, because that meeting wasn't even planned, scheduled till yesterday. It was, it was on the agenda though. That, but uh, the meeting, there was a meeting in the afternoon that that committee was supposed to be invited to, but they got the invitation in the late morning. Okay, so I'm a little confused. So Brian, can you confirm, you were invited to go to the select board Correct. But not to this afternoon meeting. No, I would. I was also at that meet. I was also at that meeting. And, and uh, can you? How? Who was at that meeting in the afternoon? Sure. So the the what's been called the selection committee, even though we're not selecting anybody, uh, but that's what it's been called, the Waterfield RFP Selection Committee. So this is the existing standing committee. Correct. So um, it. Um, the people that are involved are the town manager, Lisa Wong, um, Jack Lemenege from the Historical Commission, myself, Heather Hannon, um, and then there's a resident. Um, oh my gosh. Maureen, you're gonna have to help me. My brain is well, not the there. The bigger either. issue is that there's so many paid people attending this meeting. They're hardly, it's way outgunning the number of citizens. It's like, it's Meg White, it's Beth, with all due respect, it's you, it's Lisa, it's, um, it's Barry Fredkin, it's Jen um, Goldson. Um, I've left out a few. It's the woman from Mass Housing. It's like, it's all these people who are there moving the thing along and the citizens aren't even showing up because these meetings are just held and they can't. So we're supposed to have Mike, he does show up, but he wasn't yeah. at the one yesterday. Um, it's supposed to be Jackie Welch, but it's, these are all during the day, which is great for the for, for people who are paid, but for the volunteers, it's not working. So it's Mike, That's it's it. Jackie who hasn't been attending. Um, John Servier has been attending. It's um, Jamie Duvall who's been struggling, but she has. She's been totally noble about the whole thing and generous about it. Um, Jack, you're correct sometimes, and that's about it. So it's like it's all. It's like there are more citizens. Uh, I mean, more um, people being paid than there are actual people coming from the community. It's out of whack, and there are no abutters at this. There hadn't been any abutters. It's not my cause. My interest is in the scale of the whole project. But the scale is, um, a, we've already been through a discussion of scale over on um, uh, the uh, Main Street project. And we've also been through this uh, discussion on scale over by the um, town hall on the uh, Mill Pond building site. But this project is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, even well, though the criteria say stuff like respects the scale and so on. So it's, it's, they're, they're internal, it's internally inconsistent. Well, can I, can I ask a simple question? Who called the meeting and what was the purpose of the meeting? The purpose, so, so um, the purpose of the meeting was to, um, there were questions at the previous meeting that we needed to figure out specifically about um, this evaluation criteria. 
So when you um, say, so when you say, pre excuse me, when you say previous meeting, do you mean the public meeting last Wednesday? No. So the, um, the meet, the group meets about, we have been meeting every like two to two to three weeks, something like that, um, as an update of, to, to get the RFP finished. Um, so, um, some of the meeting, some of what, uh, most of what we talked about yesterday was based upon the public meeting from the 10th. And okay. yet neither the citizen who was invited, the abutter yeah. who was invited, I don't even know if he got invited. The resident, or our representative, Heather Hannon, I know wasn't there. When you get an invitation in the late morning for the afternoon, that's not really going to work. Neither right. select board member was there. So, so can we, can we get another place? My other question was who called the meeting? So um, the the meetings are have been handled by the consultants. So, um, but you know, Barry and Jennifer Goldson they have been managing the the work as well as, as well as Francis uh, from Mass Francis Goya's floor from from Mass Housing. So and, they've been having we've been having these meetings regularly, and we had to have a catch up meeting after the meeting on the tenth to to try to move forward towards the twenty. But Brian, the whole point here is the tails wagging the dog. The citizens think, aren't even there. I, I think that that's clear, Maureen. I'm, I'm trying to understand what the, so this was not a previously scheduled meeting. This was called yesterday morning specifically to discuss what happened on the 10th? To incorporate that into the meeting, to incorporate those uh, comments from the 10th, bounce it off the select board, and then, you know, we're, now it's giving the draft to the select board, and now they're the ones who are going to be issuing it. Okay, so that so so the meeting yesterday finalized the draft to the select board. Was that its purpose? Or near, yeah, nearly final. I mean, and I wouldn't say finalized. My understanding is that none of my comments after I spent all that time even were accepted. It was like there was this debate internally, like, oh, that doesn't, that won't work, that won't work, that doesn't matter, and like throw it all mm -hmm. out. Well, so that's not like, what happened at the select board meeting. Um, they were very happy. I didn't take credit. I gave credit to you specifically about getting the design consultant in early. So, um, well, you know, Brian, I wasn't talking just about the design consultant. I was talking about how early on meaningful input would be um, before the before this selection by this unknown selection committee um, is who knows who they are. Nobody knows. I asked for them to be identified. That was the first thing. And then I said, and how are we going to get input before the selection from the planning board, from the design review committee, and from the historical commission before the selection by this? And please tell us who's going to be on the selection committee. So what the decision that was last night was that the select board made the decision that staff was going to be doing a preliminary uh, like scoring of the of the RFP of the, I'm sorry, of the who's staff? It's unclear. Um, um, but that it was going to be staff was going to be doing preliminary. My guess is um, I, I mean I don't know exactly who that's going to be. If I had to take a guess, it would probably be Lisa, Meg, Beth, myself, and maybe others. I, I don't I don't know, but um, there was a decision that the select board made to have staff be the preliminary reviewer, but to specifically not actually score them. I was quite surprised by this. They're basically, they want to have full control over the scoring. And I was like, look, the scoring is the scoring. You have, you have five people generally score these things. And generally, everyone comes to the same conclusion. Um, that's how the art, that's how, that's how, that would be a successful RFP, meaning that you write these criteria and then everyone agrees on what the, you know, what the outcome is in terms of the, the numbers. Um, so at what point do the town boards have input? At what point does the, I mean, after the fact, or how do we get the, the abutters have some interest? They're people who care oh, about our CBD. They've been showing up at our meetings for those right. other two projects. So, um, the select board also talked about, so right, um, if the RFP gets put out next week, and then it's gonna be up for about, two and a half months till the August 31st. And then between September and October is when then when there will be public participation as well as board and committee participation in terms of whittling those um, 
eight down to three potential um, interviewees. So I, I so that's that, when that's when the public process would take place is when right. when we've actually are looking at things. So I think there are two two objects of our ire right here, and I think it's important to separate them out. Um, I think one is the fact that this meeting was called at an the the meeting yesterday afternoon was called at an inopportune moment for, as Maureen points out, the non town employee members of that selection committee. And the second object of our ire is the select board in terms of how they are managing this. Um, I was, I did not pay attention. I wasn't listening to their meeting last night. I am concerned from what you're describing, Brian, as to the policy they're pushing in terms of controlling the scoring, which I don't understand. Um, so I think we really need to push back on the select board to be very clear as to what their intentions are and how they intend to move forward. Um, I, I'll have to go and look at that meeting to satisfy my own curiosity. Um, I really do think that we cannot let this, I don't feel comfortable, I'm sure Maureen doesn't either, I won't speak for her, without having the other members on the selection committee give their input to this finalized draft. I, I don't think it's representative of the community and I oh. think we need to ask that your board, the selection board meet again at a more opportune time so that everyone can weigh in. I mean, this was, I mean, there were no, so first of all, no major changes occurred there. I mean, there was these very minor. That was my point, Brian. It's frustrating that I spend all this time trying to analyze what's going on in the RFP and I'm concluding it's all really fuzzy. It's all stuff. And I said this and everybody on the planning board received my, including Brian, of course, was, um, received my comments. The I think your comments was, are good, by the way, Maureen. We keep thanks, going. Heather. The, yeah. And I actually want to make this clear. Even in the meeting yesterday, there were no select board members there. It's like the members of the community have been just basically slowly um, as this locomotive's moving forward, the member, they've been thrown off the train. Um, it's like this is all being moved forward by people who are just paid to make it move forward and the rest well, of us are like trying to chase it. I, I, I don't, I'm not quite comfortable with that assessment, Maureen. I think that what probably happened was that the selection board felt they needed to get something to the select board by last night in order to meet the deadline that was set. So I'm going to, I'm going to personally err on the side of, of just the schedule pushing things. But I think that it's important that the selection board meet again. And Brian, I, I understand you say there were minor changes made, but if the citizen members or the non town employee, I don't know what the right term is, they may have had substantial changes they wanted to make, but their voices weren't there. So yeah, we don't that, know what the final there, Okay, so all substantial changes. So th this last meeting, and I wouldn't even call it the last meeting, but we're well beyond substantial changes. It's not like all of a sudden there was this one meeting. I mean, we've, we've met many times. There has been no, but, lots, but, yeah, I mean, but, there has been lots of feedback from everyone I, involved in the committee. Right, but okay, let me, let me rephrase that to be clearer. Um, I think Maureen's concerns that she expressed at the meeting last week and in her letter were significant, and I think they did warrant uh, an overview by the, a look at by the entire board, not just, and that's my concern, is that if her, if her concerns were such that other members of the board felt that there should be changes, they didn't have the opportunity to make those. And that's where I'm coming from. I want yeah. to jump in and also say the um, one thing that came out of the meeting Theb and I attended last week, and for us, this was the first opportunity. I don't even know when these day meetings are taking place. So this is the planning board when we finally, and we're doing the permitting on the other projects in the CBD. What we learned, Dieb and I learned, is that it's more most likely that this project will come in um, and that the, well, I should say that the developers will be filing the projects that will come in under um, special permit review, not under the um, 
40B. And as such, if we're going to be special permit granting authority, it might be nice if we had some real sense of what the projects look like. And if we might even give some specific um, uh, guidance where there are conflicting objectives right now in this RFP. It would be helpful for us to actually wait what we think is important. And right now, I think the whole pro the all, I, I just can't even imagine how a, um, somebody would present a proposal that's supposed to be number two, development concept narrative and drawings demonstrate a thoughtful consideration of the Waterfield site and are appropriate in scale. Well, there's no way this project's going to be appropriate in scale and get the number of units that's, and the amount of parking that this thing is contemplating. Um, let me step in because we're going to get way off our schedule. Um, uh, I would like to recommend to the planning board that what we actually do is um, we set, we ask the select board to meet with us regarding this. So the they, they want, they wanted to meet with, they want to have a joint meeting. So that was the other, the last thing that was, that happened last night was that they want to obviously have a joint meeting. The question was when, is it going to be <laughs> before this RFP goes out or after? And the way they were saying it, it was most likely going to be after the RFP went out. So is there a deadline on when that RFP has to go out? There That's is not, no, there, there's not a, I mean, it, we're, we're making the deadline. The, the idea is that this would be done um, by the 22nd. Okay. My understanding, Heather, was that they wanted to have, and actually, I don't consider the select board unfriendly on this, not at all. Um, I just think this thing is moving without any the citizen guidance that it really should have. The, um, my, but my understanding, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the, uh, what was proposed is that we meet with the select board like sometime in September. I think we should be meeting sometime in the next seven days. Right. I'm available. Right. Yeah, so yeah, well, they... what I was going to say is the planning board will make ourselves, I think we can get a quorum yes. available. Um, I think we need to expedite it to have a meeting with them to go over this and, and have a discussion because there is significant issues. And even for them to get through, at the end of the day, it's town meeting. And to get town meeting, you really have to go through the full public outreach process. Um, I, it's the right thing to do from the beginning and to make sure that the public are involved and that they feel that their voices are being heard. But you also, it's not the select board's decision at the end of the day, it's town meetings. Exactly. Um, and to do that, we have to back it up just a few steps and make some adjustments to the RFP. And I do think that Maureen's comments on what needed to be done are important. I think we need to have a conversation exactly because I don't think, and I might be wrong, but I have not seen any select board members on any of our pre-application meetings for the center business district um, on any of our, um, on the Zoom calls recently. Um, that I'm unclear if they actually have an understanding of all the different things that are tugging at the center business district. And before they proceed with this, they really I would make want to make sure that all five members have a very clear understanding of what we are talking about when you're talking scale, when you're up against the common, which has no building against it. Um, so, and what that means and, um, you know, I, I dream big, but I think in some ways the RFP is dreaming too big and it needs to be really focused and honed in on what are we looking to accomplish. So we can't get the housing and we can't get, we can't get the housing, we can't get the parking um, um, in all this place and then keep that character. And at the end of the day, the feedback that I'm getting from residents is they is the parking and the character is driving it for them right now. They'd love to get some affordable, but they don't wanna max it out and use this one site. They want the affordable spread throughout town, but that's just the feedback I've been getting. And that doesn't mean that, that represents everyone either. All right, so Heather, are we going, do you want to reach so, out to Mike or am I, or how do we, how do we want to do this? I will reach out to Mike right now. Okay. Thank Let's, you, Heather. You're absolutely 100% uh, wonderful. You're perperfect. Thank you so much. All so, right, so let's so, go. Yeah. Go ahead, David, if you have something last to say, I was gonna move on to- I just wanna say, Brian, my comments, um, please don't take them as a criticism of you. Uh, I'm just um, disappointed that the people who called the meeting didn't think through all of um, the attendees who couldn't make it. Fair enough. That's it. Um, all right, let's, 
So we're moving on to Lock Street mm -hmm. subdivision division seven for seven forty five. We're running a little bit behind schedule, not a little lot. Um, so uh, go ahead and we'll give the update, Brian. Um, sure. So the the applicants are here as well, um, Mike and uh, and Toby DiMartino. So this was a subdivision that we approved um, quite a while ago now, um, but the uh, appeal period was actually during the uh, exec, um, emergency order. So um, that's why we haven't seen this in a bit. So right now, what, um, just to let everyone know here, so this was two lots. Um, they were creating one new lot. And in order to create that new lot on Lock Street, they had to do a road improvement plan. They are now, um, ready to get that first lot released, the one that already has a house on it, and establish the bond. So um, they are going to put up a bond of $309,000. Um, that was based upon the engineer's memo in terms of that number. Then they have now uh, shown um, confirmation through a sure, uh, through that the surety will will be for 309,000. So what they're asking for this evening is to one is to establish the bond for $309,000. And then also release the other lot that's already been built upon. Um, Mike and Toby, you're, you're free to chime in at this point. But I, I, I think I've covered everything that you need. Um, I'm, I'll unmute you now to see if there's anything else that's required. But um, by the way of Beth's memo, um, that's where the, the number came from. And then I also forwarded the email to the planning board showing that um, what the, that the 309 is, it has been um, approved. So Mike and Toby, take it away. Um, yeah, thanks. Hi, um, guys. Yeah, we're back. Um, yeah, no, I don't really have much to add. I don't want to make this take any longer. Um, we do want to thank Beth for, um, you know, I know it's a lot of work to help us put that bond estimate together, which she did. And, you know, at this point, hopefully um, you guys are okay with it. And I mean, unless you have questions, I don't know that we have anything to add. Okay. Um, Great. I think we'll turn it over to Beth. And then if we have questions of the applicant, we'll go from there. Um, so Beth, did you want to chime in? Yeah, I don't really have much to add unless anybody has specific questions on the estimate um, that we put together. Great. Um, let's open it up to the board. Uh, I don't have any questions. I'm all set. Maureen? All set. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, more, uh, someone's going to have to do this. A Betsy? Uh, I, I am happy to entertain a motion. Okay. Oh. Does Did Betsy have anything? Is Betsy still on? She's muted. She's uh, muted. Could you unmute yep. Betsy? Uh, yeah. This is. There. There you go, How's Betsy. That? There okay. we go. Uh, Betsy, did you have anything that you wanted to add to the ask of the applicants or Beth? Nope, I think I'm good. Um, so Heather said she'd entertain a motion. Okay. Can somebody say we'd welcome a motion to <laughs> one of us can say so moved? <laughs> oh, it's on the screen. It's on the screen. Just read it. <laughs> Okay, I will move to establish the bond at 309K and release lot B from subdivision control for the Lock Street definitive subdivision. Second. Seconded by Betsy Krager. Discussion? Nope. All right, let's vote. Can, I, vote. can I just jump, jump in for a second? Um, oh, yes, you may. So, sorry. Um, since they're putting up a bond for the full amount of the um, roadway construction. I think that both lots could be released at this point, if that's um, if Brian agrees. Um, yeah, that didn't. Um, I it is possible Maybe because they're putting they're up a bond. Was, so. um, I don't know if that helps you out, or we, we're still meeting. Um, Mike and I mean, I'm certainly okay with it because they're putting up the bond. If they weren't, if it was a tri party, it would obviously be different. Um, yeah, but um, there's nothing preventing us from releasing it. We were just responding to the application, but um, Mike and Toby, did you 
need the other lot released at this time. If not, we, we are still meeting and the next time we meet is actually July 7th. I mean, we're currently just going to be starting construction on that lot. So, I mean, we're going to, I guess, need it released at some yeah, point. Right, you're, you're not selling it anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, the house is in right. building for the second lot. So you, we're just waiting for you to tell us what to do, really. Okay. Um, you, so you can't get a building permit until the lot's released from subdivision control. Um, correct. You couldn't actually start construction on it until then. So, yeah. If you oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah then right. that would be great That's if you could point. delete that. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay, so then um, so release, so then this would be lot condition. A and B from some division control. So D, uh, Dieb, you made that motion, or you're making this new motion now, and I guess we need a new second. Did you want to um, withdraw? Yeah, we can withdraw it. Okay. All right, All right. so motion uh, is withdrawn. And then so, Diab, you're uh, taking so this new one then. Motion. And I will, I will move um, to establish the bond at 309K, release lots A and B from subdivision control for the Lock Street definitive subdivision. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Krager. Um, can we all please do a roll vote, roll call vote? Jarius, aye. Krager, aye. Meister, aye. Von Maring, aye. Motion passes 401 with Hannon absent. Um, I would be interested in a motion for the, entertaining a motion for the release of the tri-party. Oh, no, so that, that's for the, that's another motion. That's that's for Highland Ave, we're not there yet. But um, but hopefully that will be the motion as well. Um, anyway, so um, Mike and Toby, um, so I'm gonna send this record of vote to you tomorrow um, and to your attorney, and you guys should be able to go on your way. Great. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you guys, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Very Stay much. healthy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, see you Mike, see you Toby. Um, so right, the next order of business is Abbey Road. Um, I don't know if maybe it just makes most sense uh, for Beth to, to start off here. Um, she's been doing the most of this work here with this applicant and this, um, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong one, but um, with the applicant and the everything that's involved <laughs> with Abbey Road release of security. Anyway, why don't you go, go right ahead, uh, Beth. Sure, yep, so um, the applicant for Abbey Road put in a request to um, have three items released from the tri-party agreement, um, landscaping, which included the installation of loam and seed and also the installation of trees in the right-of-way, um, and then also um, release for the installation of a no parking sign. So we've reviewed it and confirmed that the loam and seed and trees have been installed um, and the sign is as well. Um, the subdivision regs, and Brian, if you could just scroll up just a little bit. Um, yeah, thank you. So section 8.4.4B of the subdivision regs um, requires um, a 5% retainage held on the landscaping. Um, so when you add up those items that were in the original estimate minus the 5%, um, it's a total release. Um, of $28,450 with the $1,488 being held um, as retainage for those landscaping items. Okay. Happy to take any questions if anybody has them. I just have one comment and that's on the wording in the subdivision regs. Um, I noted that it says total improvements a percentage of the total improvements. And I guess it's assumed that those improvements are only for the vegetative. Right, it, it says to it says the cost of improvements to ensure the establishment of vegetation. Right, it's yeah. just, I think that when we get this rewritten, we should be a little more specific about which improvements. It's the, the antecedent of, or whatever the precedent is the reason the retaining a surety to ensure the establishment of vegetation, but the sub the phrase total cost of improvements doesn't specify which improvements. So, so it should be total cost of vegetation improvements. 
that yeah i was just note. when we when we review this for language because i don't know why they yeah and I, I i would say when we do review this that the whole thing right? <laughs> seems a little low when you when you yeah, that was my concern figure out what that number is that you're holding not really much you're going to do with landscaping for fifteen hundred dollars but um that's, <laughs> yeah. good. that's what the requirement of the regs is so well that's why when i saw it i thought maybe it meant the total cost of the entire subdivision which would be probably a lot more than you need yeah and yeah. why the word total i mean i just the the legislate the the wording i think needs to be tweaked that's all yeah. that's my only comment luckily there's still um quite a bit of money being i can't remember what the original uh tri party amount is but there's what was it brian like 165 or i can't remember exactly but yeah, um, yeah but, but i i it's mm -hmm. we can't i don't think we can interpret these regs to say of the total number for the subdivision so I think yeah no i agree. I just meant that after this is released there's still um you know yeah. there'll be some funds there money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah any further questions for uh, obviously the applicant's not here or not obviously but the applicant is not here at the moment um but i um i don't think we'd have any questions for him at the moment anyway i'm sorry my only other comment was that the um, the applicant only gets three of these, correct? Yeah, that that's an excellent point. Um, so I don't know if we consider this two or or one because he did technically already ask for a release, although I don't think the board had um, actually approved the tri party at that point. Are they? Are you are still? Um, it was, hasn't been executed. It hadn't been executed at the time. Hasn't executed so. Yeah, I, I would, um, I noticed that same thing in the subdivision regs. I mean, I'm fine with calling this the first one, but that means that there are only two left. Yeah, I think we just need to make it clear, or I'll make it clear in the record of vote, because he also needs a record of vote. Um, yes. I can make it clear in the record of vote, whatever you say, meaning that this is the first one and there are two more, and I can just say that. Perfect. I mean, that's clear. Okay. I can send that. Um, so the motion is, or a potential motion is before the board now. Dia yeah, made the motion. No yeah. one's made. No one's made the motion yet. Oh, you're saying I you could have done such I a great it. job. Am I <laughs> Whoa, one at a time, please. Just trying, to, just trying to make the, e the easy things go easy. <laughs> we have a motion. Okay. I will move. <gasps> Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, we will release $28,450 from the tripartite agreement with only a 1,488 retainage. Oh, wait, you can't change it in the middle of my- Sorry, but it's my fault. <laughs> right, well, we, have to, we have to say what we're talking about here. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to channel my town moderator and read quickly. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. With that. I'm done. Okay. Uh, and that's the way you spell Abby, no E? Okay. No. Okay, I'm I'm too much in the in the in the Beatles. Okay, not the Beatles. I move that we release twenty eight thousand eight hundred and four fifty dollars from the tripartite agreement for Abbey Road definitive subdivision, with a fourteen hundred and eighty eight dollar retainage mm -hmm. uh, for plantings, which will be reassessed after July first, twenty twenty one, and we should note that there are only two more um, releases available to the developer. I'll second the motion. Mm -hmm. Given to the applicant. Is that modification okay with you? Yes. Yeah, yes, given to the fine. applicant. Okay. Yes. All right. That's been seconded by Meister. Do we need to discuss? All right. Roll call vote, please. Jarius, aye. Uh, Kreger, aye. Meister, aye. Von Mehring, aye. Motion passed 401 with hand and absent. Um, uh, I actually have already gotten heard back from Mike. He would, Mike Betancourt, chair of the select board regarding meeting with them. They're looking at the 22nd. Um, they prefer, the select board prefers to meet in the morning. Mm. That's okay, uh, it's okay with me. Uh, yeah, I'll do it if necessary. Yeah, I can do it. All right, Brian, does that work for you? 
Well, you can see right here, I got a two o'clock, so. <laughs> you're good, you're free, you're free in the morning. All right, morning. I will tell him we will, we will be willing to meet in the morning on the 22nd to notify his board. They so have like a 10, okay. a 10 or something or? No, no, earlier is better. Some yeah, of I agree, actually I would say 8.30. Yeah, yeah, ideal. That's fine. That would be great. I think. That's insane on a Monday. It's okay. I know, that's, I that's, I know. that's dragon. Pretend you're going to Cambridge. Okay. I'll be fine. Okay, I just won't go to sleep Sunday night. Oh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a night. I'm a night owl as well. Um, but eight thirty will be fine. I'm. A, I'm usually a night owl and a morning owl, but not by choice. Um, by circumstance. Um, we are a little bit ahead of schedule for the ZBA petitions and the ANR. Um, do we want? Let's move to meeting minutes real quick. Um, the corrections and approvals of meeting minutes, and then the ZBA petitions will be on schedule. Yeah, I just have to note that I, I have to leave early tonight, so this works well. Okay. I'm glad to hear it, that we're running ahead of schedule and it works well for you. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> um, so in the packet, uh, so this was the packet that was sent out by um, Suzanne, and I don't believe, I, hadn't, I did not see minutes in this portion. Yeah, of there the were. Um, they were separate. October twenty second. Yeah. yeah. June twenty sixth. Tuesday, June twenty sixth. May twenty sixth. Um. Wait a second. Where are you seeing these? In my packet. Oh yes, I'm, I'm, I'm remote with the paper packet. Yeah, in our paper packet. Yeah, unfortunately, I do not have a paper packet. You don't have your oh, because you're not you're not local right now. I'm not local right now. Okay, um, so, um, is my presence required for any of those? Um, yes. Yeah, because we don't have. Yes, three. we don't have a. But you know what? We can take Double it up there. at our next Double meeting. Um, can, we, can we do the meeting that was um, that Nancy? Did that Brian sent around a couple of weeks back? Mm. One we were unable to do. It. Hi, Nancy. I saw that too. Thank you. Um, I'm. I have two copies. Are we talking about May twenty sixth? Yes, May twenty sixth. Okay, and I have two before me. Um, Brian, do you want to unmute Nancy? If she isn't, could Nancy, could you unmute yourself? She should, yeah, she should be able to unmute. Sorry about that. So I don't know if you saw my uh, message. Um, so one of the minutes is marked, um, Suzanne marked them final draft, and those are the May 26th meeting minutes. Yeah. The ones that are marked May 26th that don't say final draft, those are June 2nd. I made a mistake. Right, okay. so those no, May 26, the, so those May 20, the actual May 26 ones are actually <laughs> book ready. So those do not, correct? Those do not need. Yeah, those should be ready to go. Well, hang on, uh, Brian, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I yeah. know yeah, we're all talking at once. Because um, I've actually got this organized and in my head. So on um, the October 22nd, I'm just going to volunteer that I did read them and everything there, except for one little sentence I want to point out is um, what you might call edits or Scrivener's. So I'd like to get this back to Suzanne. Um, okay. But the other two me um, meeting minutes, um, there are some things, even the one that says final from, um, that is the real May 26th. Um, we do want to correct Art Krieger's name. It's misspelled and so on. So I do want to get them back to Nancy. There's nothing huge, but I just think she'd want, we all would oh, yeah. want well, Yeah, so totally agree. So you could do, you mean so you could potentially do a vote as amended, and then we, or are you just saying wait? Oh, I could go forward. Um, it's up to you guys. Yeah, well, yeah. If you if you want to just go ahead and make the motion, you know, as amended, and then we can do it that way. Is everybody uh, able to do the October twenty second? Yes. Well, unfortunately, I don't have it in front of me, so that's so. That's okay. We can still get a quorum vote, Dan. If you want to abstain, we, we most yeah, as long as we have vote. a quorum. As long as we have it's, a quorum. It depends time. whether Betsy was there that it she was. was for October then, 20th. Wonderful. Let's second. then let's yeah. let's move then. Let's okay. Move. So is there a motion? Well, hang on. The, there one thing was odd. I just couldn't understand it. Suzanne took it um, 
from the, um, you know, she watched the video, I believe, and mm -hmm. it said something about um, Ian Gillespie, and it said it was about Heather not marrying. She said that Ian Gillespie has two proposed developers that would like to develop at these locations. That just didn't make sense to me. Probably it had to do with two projects, but I was trying to rewrite it and I couldn't. So I just want to strike that sentence. Otherwise, everything else is just typos. And I thought she did a good job. I'm fine striking that. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to make a motion to um, approve October 22nd, 2019 as amended. Do we have a so second? Moved. A second by so All those in favor? Maureen, aye. Uh, Trigger, aye. On Mearing, aye. Deb is abstaining. We have a 301 and Hannon is absent. 302? Is it 301? No, it's, one, it's no, 301. 301. Yeah. But we have abstaining and Hannon absent. Um, all right, so we'll wait on the June second and the May twenty. The May twenty sixth is the final. So on the May twenty sixth, since it's the final, I just had one question. Probably Brian could answer it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have the minutes handy, Brian, but I'll just read it out loud. Um, it was about the um, uh, what do you call it? The safe harbor status, and it says. This results from the mixed income housing development on River Street, right? Mm -hmm. Providing more than the required 1% of 40B housing. I think it would be 10%. No, it's the 1%. So, 1%. Uh, we, so if we, we can get, we, we're, we received Safe Harbor for two years because we, we haven't built it yet, but we received two, year, received two years because we are going to build the equivalent of 1% of our total year round housing units. So if you do build 1% in a given year, you get two years of safe harbor. Oh, got it. I'm sorry. Great. I'm glad to clear, just learn that. Um, other than that, I just, um, it, it, these are ready and Nancy's right. Uh, except that I do have a couple, um, just the, and a um, correction of Art Krieger, since you'll be hearing a lot about Art Krieger, our council, it's, it's, you would think it should be spelled the way you're spelling it, but it's um, K-R-E-I which mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the one with the name Meister, you would think it'd be Krieger, but he pronounces Krieger and it's spelled um, K-R-E-I-G-E-R. -E -E so I'll just hand these, um, I'll put them in the bin um, over at town hall. And I don't know, do you, and so I don't know, I gather, do you really want a motion to amend for that? Well, can I for spelling? really quickly? Is this final draft similar to the one that was emailed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because mine doesn't say final draft, it just says draft. It was handwritten in our packets. Okay, okay, thank sorry, you. So, this thank was, you. sorry to interrupt, but this was May 26 or 6 2? May, May 26. 26th, the real May 26th. That was, I guess. Oh, I think we, then we don't, need a, we don't need a vote for that. That's a, essentially right. a Scrivener's error. So you're right. Right. Maureen. I just want to give it to Nancy. Yep. And then, um, should uh, Heather, you're up for voting for the June 2nd or not? Wait, we, uh, we don't have a quorum because Dieb does not have actually those meeting minutes. And he didn't one, get, he doesn't have. I, and I, when did we actually vote in the May 26 minutes? We re reviewed them and asked them to be edited and brought back. Right. So ah. can we vote on them tonight? Oh. Yeah, oh, they're, the edits as we requested are brought back. So well, let's vote on them. So. Okay, so yeah, no, I, that was the plan. I just want to make so June June second needs to be held. Warren, right. we can't add that into the vote of the May twenty sixth because Dieb actually has not seen the physical draft yet. Got it. Um, okay, so I'd entertain a motion for the May twenty sixth meeting minutes. I'm going to move to approve them. I don't know. As Scriveners, we usually just hand them back, but um, mm -hmm. without yeah. a motion, it's fine. They're fine. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes of May twenty sixth. I will second that. All mm -hmm. right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Betsy, you weren't there. Ah, good. Abstain. Oh. <laughs> I know I don't have my calendar sitting. Not to tell you how to vote, but you weren't there. So, okay. Oh, that's nope, fine. Well, fine. I don't know how to do that then. Thank you very much. I stand corrected. Uh, Maureen? Aye. Von Mearing? Aye. 301 and 1 with Krager abstaining and Hannon absent. All right, thank you so much, Nancy, for those and for uh, continuing to work through all these with us. You're welcome, uh, my pleasure. Really appreciate all your time. It's a good thing. To us and helping us. Um, you're very <laughs> well liked right now. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, Let me ask a question, Heather. Um, maybe okay. it's just, I see, I can't quite figure this out, but there are some more things where, um, no, uh, you know, Nancy did what she could, but there are a bunch of uh, spellings and question marks like Claire, and then she puts question marks. And so we know it's Claire Dempsey and she's got Jack and it um, should be Jack Lemenage. So I wrote all those in. So I'm just going to, I'd rather, um, even though we aren't voting them this evening, I'm going to pass them on to Nancy and maybe she can just um, add, get those and then uh, email them out to us again. Would that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that actually sounds yeah. great. Perfect. Yeah. perfect. And I can perfect. do that. In the future, I'm going to be going through, before I send those to the board, um, stuff like names and that type of thing. I'm going to, I'm, I will, I really should have done that first to begin with, but I'm going to be, I'm going to. Uh, now you were also on vacation, so we'll give you a <laughs> Yeah, you're excused. Yes. But, uh, so, but I am going to be doing that um, if there's any kind of like glaring stuff like names and that type of stuff that um, there's no way that Nancy would know. So. Yeah. It's all good. Sounds good. And, and it's, uh, it's muffled sometimes too. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Thank you so much, Brian, for taking that on. But I didn't expect you to last week given you're on vacation. So um, let's stay on schedule and move on to the ZBA petitions, number 3903-29 Westland Avenue. Um, so I believe the applicants are here. Um, Heather, I didn't know how you wanted, um, if, I don't know what, whether anyone has prepared anything or if you just wanted me to launch into my planner notes. Um, usually how I've been running um, our reviews of the ZBA petition is uh, for those applicants who are here. Um, is we have the town planner present their um, review, then we have the town engineer or the representative of the engineering department present their review. We take and, and review also if we have it, the design review and historical commission's feedback, um, and then um, we can open it to the applicants if they have things to add or want to do, um, add to that. Um, but I think you, and for the record, we should probably state those prior to all the documents and information we have as a town before they go. So there's no overlap because we do need to put your comments into record. So Brian, kick it off. Sure. Um, and just a quick note that engineering um, did not have any issues with either petitions. So they signed off um, this evening and they okay. didn't have any, okay. I, any issues you, with the ANR either. Um, Good to okay. know. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, so 3903, this is a special permit um, to construct an addition that will be located closer to the front property line than permitted as of right. It has two front setbacks and therefore two rear setbacks, no side yards. The house was built in 1931. Um, this is a two floor addition that's adding approximately 200 square feet of footprint to the rear of the property. It's non-conforming due to front setback. Mm -hmm. um, you can see here the 20.3, that is not changing. Um, the distance between buildings is between a budding building. So this is not two buildings on a lot. This is not like uh -huh. a garage. This is the building that's, uh, uh, it's, the, it's the neighbor that is now 12 feet away. Okay. Um, so if no comments were received by the fire department, I would assume there's no issue with the 12 foot gap. Um, they have not had gaps, uh, issues with gaps this small in the past. Um, it really is a small to medium sized addition on a conforming lot with a non conforming setback. And I said, based on the location, size, materials, and design of the proposed project, I didn't see any negative impacts to the neighborhood. I should also note that the Historical Commission and the Design Review Committee had unanimous votes in favor of this project. So, um, I can, that, that is. That is all I had for this. I can put it. All right. So uh, that is um, all the information that town um, that the planning board had going into this. If the applicants wanted to add any further, uh, from the, the, uh, Heather Maureen has a hand up. I don't know whether we wanted to go to the oh, applicant. Sorry, I can't or, see it. Hold on one second. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, Maureen, please. What? Please go ahead. Um, unless anybody else has questions, I think it was fine. I looked at it and I think we should just move it. Um, I do have a couple of points I want to make. They're very small. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, first off, I note that um, in the email that, that um, the applicant exchanged with Brian, 
It says that they're actually looking for relief just on the new deck, not the addition. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure that out from the actual um, packet. So that was a little confusing to me. Um, right, so the architect is here. We, we um, they can they can answer that when the time is ready. If you had other further questions, I would keep moving. Yeah. The only other thing I note is that in my notes, looking at this, is that there were no existing elevations. Um, they essentially the ex the front elevation, which is labeled existing, actually has the new dormer on the front of it, and I didn't see any existing rear or side elevations. So as I was reviewing this, thinking we were reviewing the whole structure, I found those lacking. And that's all I have to say. All righty. Um, thanks, Deb, um, for those comments. Um, I, I can see what is there based on drive-by and on also in the images and everything. Um, so I'm not concerned that they're not there, but it is a good thing for them to know that they're missing those and that might, um, the ZBA may be asking for that. Um, Just maybe a note to the, to the building department. I thought that we were always going to get existing elevations. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that is uh, independent of this application. Brian, yeah. can you go back to the building department and just say, can we keep double checking for all the elevations are present sure. when you accept them? That they don't take pictures or photographs, that the elevations are included for all impacted sides. Yep. Of just the changes, the just to remind them. Um, that, and we just ran across it. Um, and then your first question what was your first item? Yeah. It was on what they're actually asking for relief for is this deck, not the actual addition, and wanted further clarification okay. from yeah, the just, architect. Can you unlock? From the application. Can you unlock, uh, unmute the um, their architect? Uh, he should, yeah, well, he's he's unmuted. Why don't you go for it, uh, Rich, architect uh, Richard Leaf? Hi, everybody. Good evening, and thanks for uh, for your all your efforts and your time. Um, we do have four existing elevations drawings, and I, if you wanted me to share a screen, I could show them to you. Uh, but we did we did draw the existing of all four sides. In in terms of the zoning relief, um, the the point that I was trying to make to Brian in an email a couple of days ago was that the two story addition, the main addition off the back of the house, actually is by right. Uh, if you go to the next, go to the next, um, the next image of the assessor's map, that one. So the actual proposed addition is more than 15 feet from the garage. It's just a rear uh, landing and steps that's yeah. closer to the garage. Um, I also wanted to make the clarification that we did check with the fire chief, a uh, captain, uh, captain Temple, and he wrote uh, an email to me. Um, basically asking that we would tie the garage into the uh, fire alarm system for the main residence. And other than that one condition, he had no objections to being closer than the 15 feet. Thank you. Um, okay. So, and Brian, uh, I think you saw that I emailed you that uh, that is an attachment. Um, yes. Either yesterday or Friday, I can't right. remember. Right, it was after my memo had been written, but correct. And then so the I can only vouch for that, yeah. So that so the so the two pieces of zoning relief are just that eleven point nine, which is going to a four foot deep, uh, you know, eight point seven foot wide landing and steps down to grade. That that's that's zoning relief ask number one, mm -hmm. and then the, and then the other is off of Seneca Road, where the existing front corner of the house by the porch, where where Brian's got the cursor. Mm -hmm. is 20 20.3 so we're not worsening the non-conforming we're actually just following the line of the house and that is just a deck it it, it, it isn't a you know it isn't a how it isn't even a one-story addition so if you go to the photographs you can you can kind of hardly see it from seneca road it's actually fairly overgrown but we're not we're not changing we're not creating any non any new non-conformities or um you know we're not worsening the existing non-conformity I think that's all I have to say. Thank, thank you, Richard. 
All right, yeah. thank you, everybody. I mean, I'm here for thank more questions, much. but hopefully, hopefully that helps. But you know, ask again if you have anything else. Thank you. Um, comments from the planning board. I, I, I'll kick it off. I usually don't kick it off, but I'm happy to. I am fine with it as is. As and I said that as well. Mm -hmm. yep. And I agree. All right. I'll heard that. I'll heard that. <laughs> Can I entertain an emotion? I'll um, move to um, recommend favorable action. Mm -hmm. um, petition Second. number 3903. Maureen, can we can we add? Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I welcome all your uh, assistance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we favorable action for petition number 3903 for the property at 29 Westland Avenue for a special permit? I will second. Um, uh, we don't, I think we're all good with discussion. Please do roll call vote. Jurius, aye. Craiger, aye. Oh, and Meister, aye. Von Maring, aye. 401 with Hannon absence. Motion passes. Um, we will write a letter and send it on over to the ZBA for their hearing. Moving thank on you. to- Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Good night. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Good night. Thank you. Uh, well, let's move on to 3904 16 Kendall Street. Um, Do we have applicants here for that one as well? Yes, ap applicants are uh, here. They're uh, Keith and Allison um, good on evening. the screen. Hi uh, there. Good evening. Welcome. Thank okay. You. Um, Brian, want to go through your review? You already gave engineering's, but they had no comment. Right. There are no, sure. no issues here. So um, it's a special permit in order to construct an addition that does not meet the open space requirement. We don't get too many of these and the, usually the ones that we do, they're, they're usually on lots of this size. So this lot is 2,601 square feet. Um, the assessor's records say that the building was built in 1780, but that's not correct according to the <laughs> historical commission. They said it was somewhere in the mid 1850s, something okay. like that. So this is really squaring off the rear of the house with a small 167 square foot addition. Um, the existing non-conforming setbacks will not be further encroached upon as part of the proposal. Um, the the rear setback is 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 getting a little bit. Um, oh, this cannot be correct. Um, yeah, that's definitely. Not. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's there's, yeah. there's there's no way that that's right. Um, I believe it is ten feet. Um, so that looks a lot better now. Oh, that's better. Um, okay. So um, the setbacks are not changing is something that we can work with, but these smaller lots really do have a tough time adhering to the building footprint and the green space calculations. So I kind of was a little torn about this one because it is a rather small addition. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is just squaring off the back. So you're really not uh, doing any type of, um, I mean, I don't see this as being neg negatively affecting anybody, uh, the neighbors, the neighborhood, really anybody. There are a number of smaller lots in this area. So it's possible there could be more support because the abutters would like to max out their lot as well. If you look at the package, <laughs> If you look at the at the package, um, you know the whole, you know, the, everyone around them is in support of this, um, and I think it's because of the the location, the similar use of materials, and the similar scale of the buildings in the neighborhood. I, I did recommend favorable action with regards to this petition, even though the green space requirement um, is still uh, two percent off. Um, I think this is a very small lot, two twenty six oh one. And I think the idea is that they're doing everything that they possibly could to, um, you know, this is probably the last step that this house will be able to make in terms of a footprint. Um, and I, I found it appropriate. Thank you, Brian. And did uh, the documents from historical or design review? So they um, both unanimously um, approved it. We have not received documents yet. Um, members of the board, um, do you have questions for the applicant? I, I just want to point out that on this one, we also didn't get any existing elevations in the packet. Uh, well, they're here. I mean, we're staring yeah, at it. Yeah, they're here. We're so staring at it. So oh, wait, yeah. something sorry, that yeah, you missed that, that you missed in your. There's yeah. a new dormer there. 
Oh, it does say existing oh, front add is. dormer. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there is no. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Go on. Okay. That's we're on the wrong project anyway. Yeah, you're yeah. on the wrong. Going, yeah, on the going wrong. back oh. to <laughs> going back to leaf leaf Whoops. statement. They provided the existing drawings. The existing drawings are prior to the construction and they are not in our packet. They label them as existing drawings, but they actually are of the new construction. Right. So that's the clarity that Diab is mentioning. So, um, so that, that's this, but going to um, 16 Kendall, um, the, you are correct, Diab, from what I can see, we have all the new construction, not the existing. I mean, I, I understand it's a small one, but my my little brain is confused. Yeah, no, I agree with Diab. We we really should be asking the zoning. I mean, well, whatever building commissioner to make these uh, have a. We want the uh, submittals to be compliant. Right. Well, the other thing is we don't have the actual dimensions of um, a true scale drawings on those elevations, so um, it's all. You can't get that some of that information on this. You can kind of read the drawings of the perspectives, but on it really shouldn't be that way where you have to read perspectives to get dimensional exactly. takeoffs exactly. And conditions. Um, I'm not bothered by it right now to hold back us discussing and moving forward with it, but it's just another thing that we need to make sure we go back to the zone, the zoning enforcement officer that to make sure that they get full sets before they come through the process. Yeah, exactly. And so the final. Picture. That it's actually zoning because it's coming through the ZBA. The building commissioner, if he doesn't feel like he, it's a he right now, um, would like those, he doesn't have to require them. But the ZBA in this process, it really should be there. So it's really the zoning point. They are required. Um, so, okay. uh, do you have, did you have anything else to add besides the drawings? Nope, I have no problems with this, with this permit. I don't either. Anyone from the planning board have any issues? My only no. question no. is how. I'm okay. What's, I mean, we are having a special permit. Sometimes it, it's at this juncture that we um, ask for drainage. And I, I believe there was some comment. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I read this over the weekend. How is um, the drainage being addressed? Yeah, the um, the applicants can explain that, but uh, the engi engineering did not have any issues with this. Um, I would imagine that they made them infiltrate. Um, uh, oh, Keith, Keith and Allison, can you? speak to that? You know, I can't speak to it, but I know that we had included in the application the um, the stormwater and, and drainage plans that somebody that had been prepared. Do you have that there? Right. So, and yeah, that was, so Brian Kerrigan in the engineering department did not have any issues. So the, the short answer, Maureen, is that they will be infiltrating or um, they, they have been able to successfully capture the, the new footprint in terms of the water uh -huh. runoff um, on the property. I'm sorry, I don't understand. My impression was that Brian just said there's nothing further to be done. No, meaning that 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 it was that their um, stormwater management system was sufficient. But I, I think in the plants there's still some ad additional, uh, like a catch basin, or, or in the plants at the at the back of that. The the question was: Is there storm? Is there you know? Is there stormwater? Um, either infiltration or you know what's going on with the drainage. And the comment from Brian to me was um, that they approved their design and there is no there are no issues. Uh, yeah, Brian, Brian, can you can hear you, me? Yes. Can you bring up Brian's Hi. Hi, sorry, I'm Carrie Murray. Um, so I'm the architect for the project. Ah, perfect. Hi. Um, so just in, with regard to the drainage, when I've talked to Brian in the past, um, he has been able to speak with the engineer to do um, all of the upfront work at this stage um, so that they're able to propose what they would do for the site with an additional catch basin. And then if the project was approved by the ZBA, uh, further analysis could be done with test pits or anything like that to make sure that it's fully meeting the standards um, that would be required by the town. 
So that was sort of my understanding is that um, they performed calculations and if Brian felt like further ones were needed, um, they would be able to do them if required. Thank you, Carrie. Um, uh, back to the board. Um, well, I, I just want to respond and say, um, I appreciate the, I mean, I know the street. I've known people on the street over the years. I suspect the abutters aren't really thinking about the drainage, but this is a play, a neighborhood that's got a lot of, I mean, a, a lot, it's built over really. Um, so I do wonder what, what's go actually going on there and whether some improvement could be made while we're digging on the site. So oh no, no, improvement definitely w will be made. They'll definitely add um, a catch basin to make sure that all the water management is properly accounted for. So, so the engineer will, that will happen. So I'm thinking for our motion, we wanna know what exactly, is, I mean, I, I'm not going to be the end, it's going to be the ZBA, but I believe it would be in the interest of the um, town and the neighborhood for us to advise the ZBA that this, I think this needs closer, uh, one more round of um, examination. It's, I'm not but a they, the they, addition, but I really think this is the time to work But on. they did do it. There, yeah. there is. Yeah, there we, we don't have it. Um, Ms. Wait, Murray, we don't have copies of that in our packet. We don't have those drawings. And so um, typically when that happens, when we don't have the information, but people are saying that, we then go and tell the ZBA, we didn't have that information to review during our meeting. But therefore, please review this in part of your, as part of your as part of your process. As part of your process to confirm that it's there and that it's accurately, um, and that expectations are being met with the delivery. Um, there's can, no can document. Have, we we have a letter. We have an actual letter from the town engineer, assistant town engineer, stating that um, a minor increase in impervious cover should have minimal impact. The applicant has proposed a driveway trench drain to help further alleviate stormwater runoff ah. on the property. It's in his memo. So I'm, Brian, could you please bring up Brian's memo? Right, um, Fiab, I remember that. That's why actually I was raising this. Um, Where is that memo? I saw it and I thought maybe we should be asking for more, frankly. Well, that's, I'm just trying to understand what's lacking in the memo, that's all, because. Well, I don't think this drain, whatever he's describing is maybe, as much as we, I think we should be asking for more. And maybe they're uh, the proponents, it sounds like maybe are planning to do more, but where does that say this small addition does um, a, a, a driveway trench drain? That doesn't, to me, I, I don't think that's quite what I had in mind. Well, but let me just state that this is not my field of expertise. And therefore I will rely upon the expertise of the town engineering department. And so, I'm okay if the town engineers sign off on it, which they appear to have done so. So I personally don't see the need for putting in any extra requests unless we have an engineer who says they're needed. Well, I'm saying I think it might be needed. <laughs> um, I do not have this memo in my packet. It came it was like a shuffling of paper. It did, somehow it didn't make it in, but I have it on the screen, so I will give me a second. Um, given that it's a, um, given that it is an open, the changes for the open space requirement, um, engineer may want to take a second look at it. Good, thank you. Um, See, what, I, what catches my attention is he's saying it's a minor, it's minor, but it's minimal impact on stormwater runoff. But what I'm saying is, but the existing conditions are not great as it is. So yeah, it's a minor addition, but we're also digging and building and we're under the percentage already for, um, in, uh, for a permeable surface. So all I'm saying is, yeah, it's a minor addition, but this is the time for the town of Winchester to do what we can. And I'm hearing from the architect that it's going to be a um, catch basin, but what I'm seeing here in the memo is uh, about trench. a driveway trench drain. That's not the same. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I get where you're going with it, Maureen. And given that, I just, I think it is worth having engineering look at it one more time because it is the open. Yeah, just for a quick one. And I, I, which was a whole purpose is to help deal with the water. Um, it's why that is in place. And if they can help mitigate it better, it makes it a little bit more to give that variance. Um, that not variance, but special. Special permit. Special permit. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that to have them re review it just one more time. And if there's a catch basin and stuff, just make sure it's noted. Um, no one wants water, um, in their basements, especially when you do a new addition. So, um, let's, I'm fine with that. Diab, are you okay with that? Uh, I'm going to get out voted on it. So I don't have oh. much of a choice. Okay. So I'm going to make a recommendation. I will make a recommendation for favorable action. Um, but at the same time, uh, request that the um, ZBA, uh, okay, I'm going to request that the ZBA uh, can um, consider asking the, uh, well, that the ZBA ask to confirm with the architect that a catch basin will be um, built and have that plan reviewed by the um, engineering department okay so i'm well, gonna... the only thing about the catch basin is that it i'm not the engineer so it, it needs to come from the engineer and be approved by the town engineer so uh, I, yeah you know yeah, the information was included and submitted and reviewed um and so if further review by the town engineer of what was already submitted needs needs to be done for him to reiterate his finding of the review um but uh, you know that's fine that makes sense yeah I, I would just caution not to put in a technical solution because we don't yeah, know exactly. i don't know if that's if that's the solution that's agree. yeah let's just ask for further review well, no, I think there's a difference between a drain and a um, catch basin. Sorry, but, yes, I, but I don't know. Much, if it may not be super required. technical, but I know the difference. I know the difference as well. But if we ask that a catch basin be inserted when it's not required, not required. That's we the understand. This is we, very. We don't want to do that. No either. requirement. This is our. It's all. That's the whole point of a special permit. At some point, we're trying to uh, judge what's in the interest of the town and it's not there's no requirement maureen does this capture your motion at least uh well let's see confirm no i would say we're actually recommending um so i want i think there's uh, this is the time to do something more substantial than a, tr a trench so it's require the applicant and it sounds like they're contemplating it. So let's review. I still don't know how to. No, yeah. Get through to help you, Brian, here. Um, I mean, you're, you're, you're either asking well, them for something specific. Maybe it's before requesting the ZBA. It's for, for, we're for going further to, review. Um, maybe it's subject to the um, review of the engineering department. Right, but that's the whole thing too, is the engineering department is reviewing it. And even if we get approval from the ZBA, we still have to meet all of the requirements that the town is gonna to put in place for storm water management. And it's gonna to need to be reviewed and approved by him even when we submit for the permit. And so the level of re-review would, would come again and we would have to submit more formal engineering drawings to meet the demand and the requirement for storm water management. So Maureen, I'm going to turn to Brian. Yeah, I think what you're actually you requesting, question? Maureen, I think what you're actually requesting is drainage calculations, you know, full drainage calculations and the subsequent review after that, correct? Well, that's a lot of us do that. I think well, haven't we? I mean yeah, I no no I'm just I'm just trying to get the motion. Yeah. I'm just trying to get what you want. Yeah, the, the motion page. complete. All right. So can I just say one more thing? The reason why sometimes when I talk to Brian and I've done it on past projects is that there's a large expense to some of it um, when you don't know if you're gonna get approval. And so 
I, he works with the engineer to make sure that we would have something in place, but for them to come out and, and dig and do test pits and things before the ZBA was to, you know, review next week, um, I'm not sure how further review is going to work. I have on it. I have personal experience with this because we've got an addition going on now and we actually had to do the drainage calcs before. So I don't, uh, given the, this is a really tight neighborhood with a lot of runoff. So I think it's appropriate. And we, you, I think you're seeing that we're not opposing the addition. So you've got your recommendation from these three advisory boards that we're, we're okay with the addition, but we really need that water to be addressed. They can also do it as a condition. They don't, it's up to the ZBA yeah. how they would like to. Right. It. So um, I think uh, request that the ZBA um, have a full review of the stormwater of the site in, re in response that is a open, it's a green space. Um, and then, it's a green, let me go back, sorry. Um, try, I'm sorry, I'm going, trying to go <laughs> back. A paperwork galore right here from the. Yeah, uh, that's good so far. Um, on the. I think it has base, to be a broad. A request for a lack of green. There's a base review based on the request for lack of green space on the site. That's what it says. Yeah. Um, and to take that into account, right? Lack of green space on the site, and take into account um, any mitigate any further mitigation. I'm going to say that um, at least uh, we. I'm going to just put it in plain English that it looks like it's we've already discussed, including the architect, that a um, a, a catch basin is contemplated, and that we would support the construction of the catch basin. And I think that's way beyond our purview and our and our fundamental knowledge of stormwater management. Exactly. I mean. I mean, I'm married to an engineer, but I am not one. So. <laughs> well, how about this? That we're trying to mitigate the um, uh, also the potential. The, the, ex, this is extensive lot coverage on this site. So well, why don't we just say mitigate according to requirements? There are no not, requirements. There are no. There are no requirements. Um, no, Certainly, there are requirements from the state as to how you deal with stormwater management. But it's a site specific. It's totally yeah. so. I mean, it's a postage stamp. I know that, but I'm not an engineer, so I don't know what's required, and I refuse to to even con think about what might what's might required. I, I know where my ignorance lies. Um. So I, maybe it's and request that the ZBA require further stormwater review based on the relief requested for the lack of green space on the site and to mitigate um, and to mitigate uh, Same. Uh, to the maximum extent possible the stormwater. Uh, yeah. Maybe and just leave That's it at that. If engineering says that it's all set, it's all set, but at least it. Well, I like it to mitigate them to the maximum extent. That's, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, as I said, just as to the measure mitigate, does that mean they're not allowed to let one drop off their property? There must be some regulation somewhere. I don't, I'm very uncomfortable with this board deciding that they are an engineering firm. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Um, Brian. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have the ability to see if Beth can get back on? Um, yeah, I could text her. Okay. So you could jump in for I a minute. I have to say, we're building an addition now. We had to get somebody out here and they did the, you know, somebody came out, had to approve it and it's the whole work. So it's not like people don't do it. People do it all the time in this town. Oh, absolutely. 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 I, I don't disagree. No, I mean, I'm married to a geotech engineer. But so I, yes, I just I know. To, well, you've heard me say what I said. Yeah. Um, All right. So, so well, maybe we'll, I mean, I don't, I don't know if she's near her phone. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we're going to yeah, hear from her. Yeah, I understand. I understand. No, I know. I just wanted, um, 
really what it comes back is to have go back to engineering and saying that we have an opportunity at this point, given that the green space is being impacted and what the goal and the base for the green space is, do we need to go, do you need to go more than, do we need to do a more deeper analysis of the site? Is really what it comes down to. Yeah, I and, think this idea that it was a minimal addition, it's like, yeah, but it's already totally covered and we're going beyond what we, our minimum, which on this site is, and it impacts neighbors. I guess I've had too many experiences over the years where neighbors have been really upset after some construction's gone on and, you know, it's more water on their property. So it's, uh -huh. um, it's, it's our obligation to that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say something best practices. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I do, th I, I agree with Dieb in though that we probably shouldn't be talking about very specific engineering controls because we're not, we're not even looking at the, the drainage calcs. So, right. um, but I would say that you know require stormwater mitigation based on best practices from the town engineer. You know, something like that's broader would makes you know broader. But Brian. What he said didn't get there. It really wasn't. It was no. I, he didn't seem vivid. concerned. What? He did not seem concerned. Uh, that, right. Uh, and right. Yeah, that's the yeah. question. He it, like small addition. Well, it's not that big a deal. But we're looking at it like, well, this is the opportunity, and it's it is a special permit, and we do that in our other special permits. We try to uh, address bigger problems when there when the construction's going on. But just for the record, I mean, we submitted something by an engineer that he feels is sufficient and adequate and correct for the site. Um, but you're missing the point. No. <laughs> oh. Um, I, I think that we, we fall, we're getting very close to calling into question the integrity of the town engineer. Well, not. Not no, no, it's not the integrity of the engineer. Yeah, what's really going on is in a typical in a typical application, it was a small thing. They stopped there. This is actually green. It's what the special permit is asking for. And the reason we have that in the zoning um, is because of stormwater. And so he the way that he wrote his memo, it sounds like he's treating it as if it's not a green space a special permit that it's just uh you know um you know a setback or whatever so we're dealing with uh special permit in light of stormwater and it it's not confirmed that's why i would like to hear if beth if beth could come back into the meeting to confirm that they are viewing it as a stormwater concern that's where i'm coming in it's the way he wrote it and it's just the way i'm interpreting his email and i'm trying to get through this so that we can move forward and have, you know, tomorrow they know where the planning board is and it can be worked through by staff tomorrow if needed. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy with the language as long as we finish that sentence, something like based on, you know. Best practices due to reduction of green practices. space. Due to reduction of green space. Due to reduction of green space. Does that work, Maureen, for you? Well, I think um, best practices, but there needs to be something that says, in light of the, I want something about the impact on the um, in <clears throat> overall site and the neighborhood. And it's not just a small, it's not, this isn't just about a small addition. It's about the, it, I guess I would add another sentence saying, this is, this is an opportunity to, um, uh, absorb some water, recharge ground. Uh, this is an opportunity to uh, absorb um, runoff that will otherwise impact the um, the site and the neighborhood. But aren't they already required to do that? Not a French drain doesn't. They just water rigs? no, not unless we ask for it. Yeah, Beth has been talking. So this is the other thing is Beth has been talking, the town engineer has been talking that unless it's written into the decision of the ZBA or the planning board when we are the special permit granting authority, right. that it doesn't give them much um, to go on to address it. And so um, either it needs to be written in or we need to um, go a different route. So this is just having them go if they, if 
engineering is sitting there looking at saying there is a concern, they, this gives them the opportunity to actually say, okay, this is how we're going to do it. The other problem we have as a planning board right now is we don't have any of those drawings for the stormwater mitigation in our packets either. So I can't even look at it myself. These are my the expertise to look at it. So even if um, I had it, I doubt I'd be able to understand it. <laughs> um, but I could interpret it for you if I had it. So um, I think at this point, I, I'm comfortable with the way it is as it's written. And it just gives the engineering one more chance to look at it. Brian, um, if you can talk to uh, Brian and engineering tomorrow, mm -hmm. just gonna ask them and um, yeah. run this by him to let them know the, the planning board's concerns. Um, and then engineer can take it from here and this, with this, alongside the ZBA. Um, and always the ZBA um, cannot take our recommendation as well. And that's, um, but they need to have just cause to do so, so. Um, All right, well, technically no one's made this motion yet. So I'm going to make a motion that we um, uh, recommend favorable action for petition 3904 and request that the ZBA require stormwater mitigation based on best practices um, due to the green space reduction, um, and then add that this is an opportunity to further absorb runoff that would impact the site and the neighborhood. We have a first by Meister. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Craiger. Do you want to discuss or go to vote? Vote. We'll go to vote. Good. Works Please for me. Vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meister, aye. Von Maring, aye. Gregor, aye. That is a 401 vote with Hannon absent. Motion passed. We'll send a letter to the ZBA. And Brian, you'll touch base. Um, Brian Zakelli will touch base with Brian in the engineering department tomorrow morning just to kind of give them the yep. overview of what we're discussing and why we discussed it. And um, engineering may disagree with us, and that's within their thing as well. So that there is no, nothing further needed. Um, unfortunately, they're not here to give us that perspective. Um, so let's go to the ANR at Seven Socrates Way. All right, good night. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. So I just need to let people know that I have to leave in about 10 minutes. OK, um, I think we only have this left, right? You you yeah. have wanted to have a discussion about North Main Street, but I'm afraid I won't be able to uh, join you on that. Oh, about when we want to get that on our calendar and schedule it. Right, yes. right. And it's Maureen. I was also hoping to just do a start and maybe we do it by email, um, just sending in topics of things that we're wanting to do moving forward. Um, and we also, I just want to remind everybody that the uh, Historical Commission will be taking up uh, it's the number 910 Main Street that's going to be at their meeting. We could do two meetings on June 22nd. Um, so we've got the 8, 830 with the select board now and the Historical Commission will be discussing 910 Main Street for um, dem at their demo delay hearing on the 22nd. Okay. Um, that works. Brian, speaking of which, my memo that needs to go out, I need some addresses. Um, so Brian, we need to touch base tomorrow to get that memo out. Um, the addresses of all the applicants on Main Street or who you've been in communication with. Um, just right. you and I, so we can yeah, get that um, demo out. If, just, okay. Um, so we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. And Brian and I will have that will go out tomorrow morning. That letter is all ready to roll. It just, I just need the addresses of the applicant and the property owner. Where they actually reside so it gets to them right where their emails which brian has i don't have that information and i want to follow up the importance of the property owner that was on the um application and never got uh listed so we really want that and we do too not just the historical commission um yep the last thing is seven socrates and then we are all done, I guess, for the evening. Well, maybe if even if it's not a full meeting, I just want to throw out because I did make a list of some of these um, just really simple sort of old business type things that I'd like to circle back on. And I don't know if Betsy wants to participate, but it could be fast. I don't want a long meeting on this, but I just want to start throwing. I've been keeping lists and I know Heather has too of things we want to um, return to. Uh -huh. yeah, talking so about the meeting on the 
Maureen, can you send an email to me and CC Brian of your list and anyone else if you have list of items that you want to come back to that got put off for whatever reason or and can uh, you send us your list yep that'd be good uh, is, is the is the intention that we would meet after the 8 30 meeting with the select board that we would continue to meet and then we would go to historical in the evening i'm definitely going i'm obviously at both of those no matter what but i'm, I'm just trying to figure out what the what meeting we would be doing on the 22nd like in the middle of the day um i don't know if i have the yeah i didn't I, I didn't know what was being requested um i think it's to just do the 8 30 meeting with the select board and then go to the historical commission meeting regarding whoa, 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 whoa. the select board i thought was 8 30 in the morning right correct, correct. the historical commission meeting said 7 7 30 at night correct yes i think i'm going to do something else in between <laughs> yes that's what we wanted to make sure that that's what you're Ask. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're saying you wanted to do a, me a meeting of the planning board somewhere between those two meetings. No, no, correct? no. I never said that. Oh. No, I said that we, um, I would, I have been accumulating um, a list here and it's not very good actually, but I have start, I started one and I'd hoped this evening at tonight's meeting to just throw out some of those um, things that are on my list, but I could certainly email them and hope that Heather, yeah. you would share your list. So I just want to start pulling together a list and the next time we meet, start to plan our attack of how we're going to use our time in the next few months. I think that's yeah. a great idea because we well, so we, we, we don't meet again until July 7th. Hmm. So um, we can discuss uh, agenda, uh, li literally no content, just yeah. agenda stuff and start pulling together agenda um, interests. So why don't we, you know, so we'll start. So Maureen, send, send it just to the board, send everything to the board and then right. Heather will send everything to the board and then Heather and I will, we will, we'll talk and we'll, we'll weed that in. And then Perfect. schedule Perfect. some time when we meet again um, outside of the meeting and I'm predicting maybe even meetings, we really need to figure out how to deal with this water field uh, project. But separate from that, um, just the, what I, for me, I would consider these uh, items mop up, just old business that's been kicked down, kicked down the road. Well, it's always good to clean up. Um, and let's go back now. Sorry, I'm when, yeah, when you said North Maine, I thought you were talking about the, the project for the demolition on North Maine. What you're talking about is the, the, study. Our, the North Maine the study. study. The study. Yeah. Which yeah. my apologies now that no, after you said it, it sunk in what you were talking about regarding North Maine. There's a lot going on. Um, with that, my thoughts is to have Brian do a draft and then we attack it. Perfect. Um, there right. I like, not if you know, Brian, you know what I mean. That we come in and say, mm -hmm. you know, what about this? Or let's take this out of it. Or he comes kind of gives us something to start the discussion versus a blank slate of what he sees um, we that needs to be done. Um, he helped write my speech that I gave to town meeting. Um, and so he kind of knows Brian Kelly knows that what the goals are of that study um, as good as anyone. So if using that and Brian, you actually have access to my speech from Dropbox mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Just build an RFP draft that then on the seventh, we can as a board look at and um, provide feedback in that meeting. And then on the seventh, we also need to take up Harvard Street. Correct, so we've been- going um, to take a, I anticipate that's going to need a lot of time. Um, a lot of people are interested in that property. Sure. So that's why I couldn't fit it into tonight's agenda. It, and we're looking for like 45 minutes or yeah. We, okay. Definitely. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so they're they're on board for the seventh. Um and Good. They're, they're, we'll see we'll see what happens then. Yeah. And um regarding Harvard Street, um John Clemson provided his memo on that property. Um you saw some of my research regarding and it's not in the perspective of those who actually lived in the area. Um, so um, we're kind of in a loss right now because I don't know how to proceed much further because everywhere I go, we can't get access to documents because it's all inside the library. So I'm not exactly sure how to research that any further than John already has. Um, I mean, he certainly turned up a lot. But. Well, I also was in touch with somebody who used to work in preservation in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, sure. I guess I've been interested in the fact that it's much of the um, Winchester's black community, not surprising, people knew each other and then came on up here, um, but they were from that area. 
It'll take some time. Um, Claire yeah. Dempsey also has done a more, uh, she's got a different perspective. There are several different people who have knowledge of different types. Yeah, so Claire's doing her job behind the scenes as well. I just, we, there wasn't the, the, the network has, has little about the actual neighborhood. They have more information about um, Medco and um, town meeting decisions um, that imp impacted um, the black residents of Winchester, but they don't have much about the actual um, land use. Mm -hmm. Well, and there are other aspects of it, and I'll stop for now, but the, um, you know, it was when this is all taking a very local perspective, but there is a whole national perspective of um, this it was actually early when the black community moved up um, into Winchester. Uh, the, there's a, it's called the Great Migration, but it begins uh -huh. during World War I. So this community was already established by then. So it's interesting, and I would like to know what was going on in this area around Lynchburg that um, uh, in, precipitated this move north. Um, I believe lynchings would be one aspect of it. it. I'm sure it's a sad story, but that's part of it. Yeah, and I've been, I've been reading a book that has hits on some of those aspects. It's fascinating and sad, as you say. Yeah, the, the, so the planning board will take that up at Harvard Street on the 7th, and then we'll also review uh, a draft of the RFP. So Perfect. Brian, I'll give you about two weeks to do a draft. Um, mm -hmm. if, does that give you enough time? I'm a few weeks is fine. an assumption without asking you. No, no. <laughs> I mean, a few weeks is fine. There were uh, most of my time for the past three weeks. A lot of it was that MVP grant. So, um, you know, I can replace that with this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always got something. Yeah. Um, gives me enough time to hone my knives. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last vote or the last potential vote we have this evening is for seven Socrates. Um, this is for mind? A and R. This is an A and R. Okay. Right. So. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, what's happening here? I'm sorry, this didn't get into my memo. Um, it wasn't. A f we, I had. I was going back and forth. Um, it basically had to do with this this whole thing that just says wooded area right here. It's really the like the entire area. You can see it's in in separate places. But there was no chance we were ever going to require them to to mark every mature tree. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge forest here. So that's number. That was the only issue that we really had at the beginning. Uh, when I say we, I meant engineering and I. So what's happening here, it's pretty simple. We have a house here at Seven Socrates. They have some type of a structure here that was actually never on their property. So they mm -hmm. are buying this triangle uh, or, tran or th this triangle is being transferred. For, I shouldn't say buying, I don't know how, what, whatever's working, but the, this triangle is being transferred from this um, uh, NF Mahoney's Winchester Real Estate LLC parcel to this parcel at seven Socrates way. So it's just, it's this little portion is now gonna be part of seven Socrates. So I had no issues here. They had everything that they were required on the plan and recommend endorsing the ANR. Questions from any members of the planning board? No, it sounds pretty straightforward. Maureen? No questions, thank you. Deb? Nope. Uh, entertain a motion? Um, Make a motion to oh. endorse the ANR. Um, so Brian is typing the motion. Um, if you'd be willing to include to allow the clerk to attest to the vote, that would be wonderful. So I don't have to go in and sign. Right, really, um, I make a, a motion to endorse the ANR at seven Socrates and have the clerk um, attest to the vote. I will second that. Mm -hmm. All right. First by Meister, second by Jirius. Um, all those in favor, roll call vote, please. Aye. That's Krager. Meister, yeah. aye. Jirius, aye. Von Maring, aye. Motion passes 401 with Hannon absent. I believe that um, takes up all of our business at this Wait, one, time. One, one, one amendment or one. Ah. Brian, uh, you didn't put a uh, first or second on the minutes vote for 1022. I believe that was Meister and a second, Craiger. Yep. It's correct. 
Yeah. Sorry about that. Thanks for the catch. Um, <laughs> and uh, it looks like the email just came out from Mike to the select board and CC asking them to meet with us at 8.30 on the 22nd. Great. Okay. In the morning, um, Brian will be following up or they will be following up with a Zoom for that to discuss the water field lot. And um, can I suggest that, um, Brian, could you circulate to everybody again, the RFP as it currently stands? Oh yeah, we don't have the current one, that is true. Yep. Um, and um, any work you want us to do prior to that meeting besides read it and I guess I would advise everybody just think about if you're a developer um, and put on your developer hat, what would you think the town is looking for and how would the process work? Wh how would you be likely to what's the what are what's Winchester wanting and how is this selection going to go forward and how is the permitting going to play out? Because I think there's um, those are the big questions. And I think that the RFP doesn't get you there. Yeah, uh, you got, and I think we also have to find a way to really get the select board to narrow down what they want. I what agree. The town really wants. Good. And right now it's too all over the place. We got to choose, is it parking? Is it affordable housing? Is it commercial? What is it? And is it scale? Because if it's scale, we can't go as high. So exactly. Um, and you know, lessons learned. It's all we can share is our lessons yeah. that we learned going through the the process that we've been going through. Now, um, can we try to get the town manager at that meeting as well? I I think she goes to all select board. So I'm, I I would I would hope. Oh, wait a minute. She's on vacation. She's on vacation on and off for two weeks starting this Friday or starting Monday. Oops. Well, we, yeah, I, I think really we go forward. Yeah, no, I, I, we have to go forward. The time, honestly, yeah, they're going to go forward without wasn't. us, I think, if we don't anyway. So, exactly. Um, okay. Well, at least right, so is the intention to write it there since the deadline is the 22nd, or is intention to give them ideas so that they can rush amendments to it? I mean, I think, well, I think we all should be looking at it. As I said before, one which should not be controversial is just the goal of trying to clarify who's doing what. And it's just yes. not clear. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is they have to come up with a better plan to get them from here all the way to town meeting. Right. It, there's got to be taken to get there and actually get there in a where town meeting feels that they have been part of the process. Exactly. Right. So that, everybody, so that everybody is comfortable. Yes. Yeah. The release of town land is very difficult to do. People get very nervous about it. Well, uh, just to build on well, what yeah. you were saying, Heather Von Meering, that the, um, right now, if you imagine, I'm, this thing really, I don't think it gives enough weight to how much even the select board and we and the residents care. We do care about our small retail. So if we're dealing with that parking, we've got to somehow deal with the parking, which it's not explicit, but it's a direct line from A to B to get from the parking to the small retail. So the parking's still there, and then the units are going to present more parking, and then there's the whole issue of scale, which is in the RFP. Right. But there, right now, it's got to, somehow there's we need to reconcile some of that. Yep. Okay. okay. So I'm about to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> Me Long too. season. Oh, uh, you don't. Okay, you can you don't take carriage anymore. You can go back to being a pumpkin, DM. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I I would love to entertain a motion to adjourn. So I think DM just, just did. Adjourn. Right? <laughs> All right. So that was DM moved, seconded by Meister. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, everyone who joined us um, for Wind Camp this evening as well.